Hi everyone, so here's another series of you to do where we're going to combine multiple pieces of apparatus if you have them at your disposal. Remember if you don't have the roller you can easily do it without, if you don't have the ring you can easily do it without as well, but if you have both wait for this powerful session. So we're going to start with laying your um, roller down along the length of your mat and then taking a seat onto it right towards the very edge. So we're sitting up nice and tall, your feet are out in front and we're going to go with a little bit of a wider foot position today and lengthening your arms out in front of you. So from here we're going to start a small tilt of the pelvis backwards and then rolling yourself forward back up into sitting shape again. And again leaning yourself into a curved spine and then rolling up back into balance. So we're going to start to take this a little lower with every move that we go. Remember to keep your arms in line with your shoulders so you're not dropping your arms and you're not raising your arms. And as we come down on this next one, I'd like us to get to at least the sacrum and part of the lower back onto the roller's edge. And then again, peeling yourself away and coming back up. Now rolling yourself up away from the floor is not always an easy task. Trying to do it on a foam roller is a little bit more challenging. We're at the base of the shoulder blades, still looking forward and then pressing down through the feet to help bring you up. Now I know in some instances people's feet like to fly off all over the place. So if you need to go find something like a set of weights to hold your feet down so that you can rest completely. Head is onto the roller and ring is above. And then from there again, let the head nod, curl forward, aiming yourself all the way back up into your seated shape. So with the feet nice and wide, a little easier. Let's bring those feet in a little closer and then we're going to try that one again. So rolling yourself all the way down, lengthening yourself away from your thighs as you do. And this time as you get toward the floor, make sure that your head and shoulders are supported. Aiming the arms all the way over for a nice long stretch behind you. And then again, lead the arms to the ceiling. Curl the top of the head forward, looking through the ring as you roll yourself all the way back up into a sitting position and you'll probably notice that it's a lot more challenging when those legs are closer to each other and again coming down as smoothly as you can it's important to lay the spine down nice and quietly and gently so that you're not slumping into the position and we'll do one more time I know this is a challenging one to begin your whole series with but hey it's just the way it worked and then reaching out and then last one's going to take us down and we're going to stay down so you'll be pleased to know that so as we take the arms all the way over behind you, I've flattened my ring so it's still facing up towards the ceiling. So I haven't gone into a tensed grip through my hands and then bring the circle all the way through and I'm gonna aim it down towards my thighs. So the whole time I'm keeping the face of the ring facing towards the ceiling, lengthening back behind and then bringing it forward. And you may ask why on earth am I doing this? Because I'm trying to involve lots of different senses and movements within my body. So in order to do that, I have to be really aware of what my hands are doing so that I'm not just collapsing my wrists down, but I'm changing the angle of holding the ring each time it goes backward or it goes forward. Let's bring the ring back up towards the ceiling height without moving off the roller. Just move your arms over towards one side and then over toward the other. So here, very subtle, but you're working on your oblique strength to keep you stable on the roller as the arms are now moving away from the center line. Again, check that you haven't bent your elbows. The arms are staying straight and the space between your shoulders and the top of your ears, or bottom of your ears, sorry, is staying nice and distant. So they haven't met one another. All right, now we're gonna move that into a circular action. So we'll send the ring back behind you, move it off to the side, lowering it towards your legs, to the other side and over the top of your head, and then pause. And then we're gonna go the opposite direction. So sometimes when we get into a pattern of doing the same thing over and over, pause at the top and change direction. Your body just gets used to it and you don't actually feel like you're being part of your movement anymore. Whereas if I keep changing the technique, then you're gonna be a little more present with yourself and with the movements. And we'll go one more circle time around each direction, pausing as we get to the top each time. And then, you know, let me know in the comments after this 
clients, if you can feel your feet working through the movement and then raising the ring back up towards the ceiling. From here, we're going to take it as a little support for the back of the skull. So it's right on the back of the skull area, so not into the neck fold. And then you'll put your hands at the top edge of the, um, of the uh, ring. I'm gonna walk my feet back a little closer towards me because I'm going to do a bit of a challenging movement. And that's to curl the top of my head forward looking between my legs. I lied, it wasn't that challenging. It's gonna get challenging in a moment and then coming back down again. So I always like to build things up so that you've got a place to stay or to work through as you then get into the next position. So when we curl the top of the head forward, you're pressing gently into the ring surface, but you're not tucking your tail toward you. That's gonna help, that's actually gonna prevent you from getting into a better position in your upper body. And again, looking through the legs towards the wall in front. Now, some people like to close their eyes as they work out. I'm one of those people, but when I film, I don't really like to close my eyes. So now comes the challenge. As you curl up, you're going to bring your left knee into a tabletop position and then lowering your foot down nice and gently and your head back. It's almost like a timing thing that as the head is lifting, the foot is raising. And as the foot re returns to the floor, the head comes down. And as I said, it is a bit of a challenge. So talking through the movement, sometimes easy, sometimes not so easy. So we all have a stronger leg. This one is not my stronger side. So I have to concentrate a little bit deeper with that one. I think it's important when you're working out and following along with videos that you can actually see a real life person. Because, you know, we all have strengths and we all have potential weaknesses in our body. Plus we're on these unsteady surfaces. So we're gonna add on to the movement. Remember, stay with what works for you. Curl yourself up, stay lifted, and then lengthen the leg out in front of you, and then fold it back. Place it on the floor as you lower your head down. And then other side, remember this is my more challenging side, so if I stop talking, you'll know why. Lengthen the leg out, bring it back in, and then lowering back towards the mat. So some people always ask, oh, how am I supposed to breathe? Well, you just have to breathe in and you have to breathe out. Those are the most important rules of breathing. <laughs> so I know that might not be very helpful, but I promise you, if you use your breath to help you move, you will naturally breathe the way you're meant to. If you hold your breath is when we start to get into a little bit of difficulty and then returning back towards the floor. All right, we're gonna keep the hands above you and see how we go. We're gonna widen those feet again, walk them a little further, and then nod your head forward and curl yourself all the way up into a sitting position. Wow, that was a bit of a challenge. <laughs> all right, and then we're gonna turn you around and we're going to take the roller now underneath your shin area. So holding on to, um, and toes onto the ground and hands onto the floor. We're gonna use the ring in a little moment, but let's just get ourselves set up first. So checking that we're not going to collapse between the shoulders, we're going to do that as an actual movement. So a controlled movement as we allow the chest to sink between the arms, working the shoulder blades back to each other called retraction. And then we're gonna push the floor away from us, letting the rib cage come up to meet the shoulder blades. So we retract shoulder blades, slide together, and then we press away from the floor, which is called protraction of the shoulder blades coming more toward the front and sides of the ribs. And then we'll do one more time, lowering between the chest and then pressing yourself up again. From here, we're going to bring the ring out in front underneath your left hand and reach your arm out in front of you. Take your feet away from the floor for added challenge. And then from here, it's a small press onto the ring surface and you're going to extend your right leg away from you. And we're gonna hold the position for five, four, three, two, one, and then you're gonna bring your knee back in underneath you. We're gonna flip the ring over to the second side. So right hand is out in front of you, left hand is still underneath the shoulder. Feel the energy of pressing down, but without collapsing the ring. So strong through the back of the shoulder muscles into the back muscles, and then extend the left leg out in front of you. And we're pressing gently into the ring and we're holding for five, four, three, 
to one and then returning it all the way back in again. So we repeat again, changing over each time is part of the movement series that you've still got your toes away from the ground and your hands support underneath your shoulder. And again, here we go, reaching arm and leg out. Pause, count, breathe, stabilize. Notice where your head position is and then bringing it all the way back in again. And again, changing it over. This will be our last one, just in case you were wondering how many we're going to be doing. Gentle press down, long line. Feel strong through the back line of your body from your shoulder blade all the way to the glute that's holding your leg up in space. And then bringing it all the way back down again. All right, so from here we're going to do a different variation with our ring. You're going to place the ring at the base of the um, ankle and the base of the sit bone. Now sometimes it slips out of position. So all you have to do is make sure that your foot is away from the ground and just hold it gently in. It's a bit of a hamstring control. And then we're gonna raise the leg up toward the ceiling and bring it back down again. And again, floating it up and bringing it down. So our set number is just um, five at a time. So we've got two more. And then holding the next one up and we're gonna do tiny little squeezes. Five, four, three, two, one, and then lowering it down. We've got a sideways movement to do, so opening the knee out to the side and bringing it back. So we wanna feel a gentle swinging of the leg open and then easing it back. Now, don't be fooled, it's not the leg moving that's getting all the work and benefit, it's the one staying still. Hold it here and squeezing one, two, three, four, Five, and then returning that leg all the way in. Let's switch it over. Ring at the back and at your ankle. And again, if it's just going all over the place, you can do this with a ball behind your knee, but the ring is so much more of a challenge. And here we raise the leg up and bringing it down. Now, I'm not trying to get my knee to the ceiling and my thigh in a diagonal line. I'm really just trying to get my leg to about the same height where it would be in its normal quadruped position. So two more of these. And then last one, holding it up and steady. And then five little squeezes of the heel. Again, I'm not trying to close sponge to sponge. I'm just working into the hamstring connection and then bringing it back. And then let's take it out and bring it in. So when your knee goes out to the side, there will be a temptation for you to lean off too much into the opposite hip. So you really wanna stay as steady as you can through the sides of the body. Four, and then one more time, we'll hold it out. And then gentle heel squeeze, two, three, four, five, and bring it down, very nice. And then resting from there. Let's take our roller out in front of us and take our ring now between our ankles. Again, a fun place to try and get into when you are lying on your tummy. So if you need to, you can set yourself up first and then bring yourself down. So reaching the arms out in front, start at about the first third or so of your forearm. Just having your knees bent and your feet facing more vertical, we're gonna pull the roller in underneath your forehead line and then press yourself all the way out again. And again, pulling the roller closer to you and pressing it out. Now let's keep the arms still and let's stretch the legs away, hovering your knees off and then bend your knees again. And then reach the legs out and long and then bringing them back in. So we're gonna do one of each. We're going to fold the arms in. As we straighten the arms, the legs are going to lengthen out. As we bring the arms in, the knees are going to bend. And again, pressing out and folding in. And we'll go for three more. And two. And then last one, we're gonna keep the legs all the way out long and keep your arms straight and begin to lift your chest, lift your legs and lower yourself back down. And again, lift the legs, lift the chest 
and bringing it in. And if you're finding that the roller is not in the right position for you and you want to move it closer or further, then of course that's what you need to do. Two more times, a little peel of the front of the chest up, really working through the backs of the legs. And then last time, lift and then bringing it all the way back in. You're going to bring the roller underneath your forehead and you're going to take the ring and hold the back of your right foot. So we're gonna pull that leg all the way in towards you. You'll have a nice big bend of your elbow out to the side to get a good stretch coming down the front of your thigh. So you can hold on with both hands if you want to, pulling yourself closer towards your buttocks with your heel and then lengthening your leg a little bit away. That's gonna open up through the shoulders and then pull the heel toward you and then press the legs out and away. So I'm not straightening my leg, but I am letting my arms go into a nice straightened position, which is gonna open across the front of my chest. And then drawing that in, and we're gonna switch our leg shape. So we go onto the other side now. And again, just starting with a gentle pull of the leg towards you, just testing it out. How does it feel as you bring that heel towards your bottom? And then if you've got the willingness, take both hands into the ring, pulling closer towards you and then pressing that leg away, just peeling the shoulders back. So sometimes we do this movement and we also lift the chest away from the floor. Today we're just moving into the shoulders and moving into the leg. And then one more time as we take it all the way back out and then bring it all the way back in again. And then undoing yourself from there. So we're gonna take ourselves into lying onto our back to finish ourselves off with a little bit of fun. So as we lie onto the back, we're going to slide the roller under the pelvis. So lift your hips up and find your sacrum nice and steady. There are a couple of variations with this one. Please take care of your own body because if it's not going to work for you, then I don't want to cause any harm. I just want you to do what feels like it's enough of a challenge for you. Feed your feet through and then put the ring so that the sponges are at the top side of your knees. The first move we'll do is just a gentle side to side motion. So when you're on the roller doing this exercise, you get a lovely stretch or release of the back muscles and the glute muscles and the abdominal muscles that are all attaching onto the pelvis. It's such a lovely place to get some relieving feelings through. And then we're gonna bring our legs back into the center line. And then from here, you just keep your hands resting onto the roller. You're gonna bring your knees towards you, lift your bottom up between your shoulder blades you live, and then you're gonna come back down again and bring the pelvis back on top. So it's quite a challenging movement. Be careful of wanting to knock your nose with the top of the ring. So you've got to really lift the hips up. You're going to press down onto the arms as you fold yourself into an upside down position and then back to your stye. Now you're welcome to stay with that variation. It's great as is. If you know you've got capacity, then we take the legs long and you fold yourself up and over, aiming your legs towards the other side of the room. Keep your feet away from the floor so we're not collapsing the legs down. You're growing in the length and sides of your body and then rolling back and fold your knees. And then we'll do that one more time as you lengthen your legs up and then roll over pressing gently down through the arms onto the roller's edge. But just as we began today's session in the roll down from the start to the bottom, this is all about spinal mobility and abdominal strength. And then let's take ourselves out of that. Rest your feet to the floor, remove the roller and lie your body back down onto the ground. So just take a moment here as you just feel your new sensations through your body, you'll often find that you have to shift a little bit just to, um, just to find where you are in space again. And then we'll roll off to a side and push you up. And we're just gonna end with that today. So I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you soon.